Namaste, Jain everyone. Welcome to Yonke the Eagle View. Today we are going to see a very important update uh, on a press note or a press release given by the FBI director of uh, US, Christopher Ray. So he uh, went on record. It was an address which was meant to meant for common public, uh, the citizens of US and all of us. So let's see uh, the crux of what he is trying to say. He had predicted that Chinese hackers, which is basically backed up by the Chinese uh, People Liberation Army, he is preparing to wreak havoc and cause real world harm to the US. So he says that so far so many think tanks have assessed about the Chinese cyber offensive capabilities, how far China can go, how strong are they, what are the technological advantages they have, uh, have they done any technological demonstration of a smaller or larger scale. So these are all theories and these are all more uh, intellectual discussions which is happening in most of the think tanks. But he says that China is up and ready to do it in the real world which will harm US at a very very large scale. Uh, now, what are they actually targeting? They are targeting the American infrastructure, which is their grid lines, power grid lines, their dams, their water management, their uh, administrative capabilities and possibly everything that is linked with the internet. Uh, so, he says that uh, now the time has come for China to strike us. Now, the, like one is you assess your enemy about his capabilities, his cyber offensive capabilities. And then you de decide where all it can go, how many incidents has happened in the past, what all the latest technologies they may have, the cutting edge technologies they are researching. And then you see these are the post potential threat to me. But here it says that it's already timed and they are about to do this. Now we see the enemy is actually at your door. That's what uh, uh, you know uh, Christopher Ray is telling us, to, you know, trying us to tell. Uh, so cyber officials in US have spoken about this. Uh, every year on a year to year basis they were uh, giving their request and they are giving projection, uh, projecting the, the risk uh, with the US uh, Congress and it was all and whenever this was done there is a you know famous saying in the US circle that whoever wants more money projects more threat. So this was not taken that seriously uh, but he says that these warnings have been downplayed or maybe not taken seriously. But uh, today we have the uh, you know, National Security Agency of US, uh, senior US officials, uh, is a Congress uh, person, people, uh, Congressians who are part of this uh, cyber security have everybody unanimously said that our uh, infrastructure in terms of uh, uh, critical infrastructures like dams, roads, railways, you know your uh, toll management which people use every day and also the strategic assets are under severe Chinese hackers threat. Uh, so uh, water treatment plant is one, electrical infrastructure is one, oil and natural gas pipeline is one. Now consider water, electricity, oil and natural gas. If this gets hacked or some disruptions happens here in a large scale, the country will literally come to its knees. That is what we can understand because these are three basic essentials for any human being to uh, survive in the current world scenario. So they are targeting all the three of it. And they are, uh, his words, choice of words, we need to you know look at it very, very carefully. He says to find and prepare to destroy or degrade the civilian critical infrastructure that keeps us safe and prosperous. So here they are targeting the civilian infrastructure. So without gas and oil, you can't survive. Without water, you can't survive. Without electricity, you can't survive. It will put people under tremendous amount of hardship and it will also uh, put uh, the prosperity in question. It will have a severe economic impact on the US. Uh, so, these are the real world security uh, threat, security threat. Uh, and he also mentions about uh, physical safety. We are not sure where, what exactly it means threat to physical security by means of cyber offensive operations. Uh, but the Chinese government till date have been consistently denying all these allegations which has been made by US. Uh, even some uh, uh, you know, time US has given evidences but China has always uh, you know, refused that we are not indulging ourselves in such a thing. Even in the US-China meet which happened in Taiwan and the US by, uh, you know, Biden uh, and uh, Xi Jinping's meet which happened in US. In both the things, China has assured that we will not get into your, uh, we will not do a cyber offensive operation on you and we will also not meddle with your internal elections. We are all aware that uh, US presidential elections are uh, there by end of this year. 
So China has promised Joe Biden that I will not interfere in uh, your elections. We know what happened with India. He came and uh, landed up in Chennai with such a bilateral uh, cordial meeting in Mahabalipuram. When he landed at the same time, the Chinese PLA was doing all those uh, gimmicks in the border. So the Chinese can never be trusted. Their words can never be trusted. So he also says the same thing that uh, in spite of what they have been promised, they have promised, we just can't sit over that they will not do so. The promise what Chinese make is Chinese promise. It's not a real promise. Uh, and he also says that uh, the Chinese foreign minister's assurance to Biden, yes, it is considered. But we have to keep a close, wa you know, close watch on you, which clearly means, yes, your words are fine, but I'm not going to trust you. The diplomatic way of putting it is, yes, we trust you, we agree you, but we'll still closely monitor it. If you trust, you don't have to closely monitor it. So that's what uh, Ray says here. He says that, you know, uh, when the question was asked him that China has given a lot of commitments to you, the beautiful words from him, China promised a lot of things over the years. So I will guess I will believe in what I when I, I so I will guess I will believe it when I see it. So he says that unless or until I am not going to see it myself, I am not going to believe in any of the Chinese promises and commitments. The cyber offensive part of it and US cyber defense. And US cyber offensive versus Chinese offensive, uh, cyber offensive says, one report says, if the US employs all its cyber sec, uh, you know, offensive assets to go against China, vis a -vis Chinese strength against US. It is 1 is to 50. The amount of uh, hackers, Chinese professional hackers whom they have trained and deployed uh, in Russia, in North Korea, in various other countries, in Iran, across the globe is 50 times more than the size of what US can, US cyber offensive can do to China. Okay, now he says, in a reason, the federal law enforcement has used a court order to allow the Justice Department to remove malicious code from uh, hundreds of devices in US. So, uh, the US is currently facing the wrath of the Chinese hardware. We all know in India, uh, uh, we don't use Chinese cameras per se in our defense establishments. So, we had uh, this famous brand called uh, Hick Vision, which was banned by Indian Navy, by Indian Navy, you know, Air Force and Indian Army. All those cameras were removed and uh, made in India cameras were put or a German branded cameras like Bosch was put. But here, because of the cheap uh, Chinese products which they had, a sizable amount of US China infrastructure in terms of their electronic surveillance and all is mostly Chinese made, as I guess 70 to 80%. Now they are looking at an alternative supply chain. That's where India comes into play. But India is not yet ready to provide such a massive scale of uh, hardware, especially in electronic surveillance as far as America is concerned. So uh, India is still a long, long way to catch up. We need large corporates to invest in this. That's a work in progress, but still, uh, it's, it's not possible for Ch you know US to replace China with India because India is not yet ready. The smaller nations like Taiwan and Vietnam are ready, but you can't expect a larger scale. They, you can't expect such a small country to replace the volume of goods which flows in, especially in surveillance and electronics from China. Uh, you know, and uh, they say they have, Chinese hackers are able to reach their ports. Their railway networks, their transportation networks, their elect uh, traffic signals, their subway, metro operations and possibly everything. That's because most of these places, the Chinese hardware has been used by US uh, since last 40 years or so. So this 50 is to 1 is another uh, ratio. Uh, uh, America doesn't have those many number of hackers, uh, professional hackers. That's where uh, America is insisting and partnership with India where they can train uh, you know Indian experts, Indian cyber experts not only in cyber defense and ethical hacking but also in uh, professional offensive because the cyber uh, warriors or I would say the cyber warfare does, is not geography bound. You really don't have to be in a uniform getting trained in the military and doing hardships. It's more to do with uh, internet. It's almost 100% to do with internet. So you can have your virtual army deployed across the globe. Or you can train your friendly nations so that as and when it is required, you know, you can use them against the, the Chinese might in terms of uh, the cyber offensive operations. So it also says that uh, this also targets our freedom reaching inside our borders across America to silence, coerce and threaten our citizens and residents. Now, uh, you can imagine there was some years before there was a con you know, game which was banned by countries across the world. It was called a blue whale game. It uh, instigated a lot of suicides among young children 
and eventually this game was banned so you know one game made by somebody somewhere in the world could kill scores and scores of children across the globe so that's the power of cyber warfare it is boundaryless you can't guard it you can't deploy weapons against it uh, your soldiers are not essentially had to be from your enemy country or your soldiers can uh, you know essentially had to be from your uh, neighboring country they can be anywhere they are omnipresent they can penetrate possibly in every possible uh, thing including those cameras which you have kept in your uh, home so a lot of people uh, when we do this consulting and all we say that even if you have a webcam which is an uh, inbuilt one in your laptop or maybe your tv in your personal room it's better to uh, you know put a opaque sticker on it mask it mask the hardware and don't trust the software nothing is safe nothing is safe absolutely uh, so we have seen an incident uh, where in, i think uh, two weeks before uh, a, guy, a, a teen passenger indian origin i mean british guy a teen passenger who was flying from i think from uh, frankfurt to london uh, in the airport he just texted on a snapshot he just texted someone that uh, i am a taliban i am going to uh, you know blow a bomb you won't believe in less than 15 minutes uh, the nato fighter jets were airborne and they were escorting this flight and then uh, the flight was grounded he was taken on custody he was arrested eventually his parents and him has to pay a fine of i think 1.25 lakh uh, us dollars but imagine this kid typing something uh, from an airport and then the communication the, the particular communication has been traced it has been analyzed they found a threat and the threat has been informed uh, to the atc and the atc inform you know informs to the nato nato takes a decision nato flies its flight jets fly it uh, scrambles this uh, passenger aircraft and then it gets on all this happened in matter of less than 10 to 15 minutes now that's the power of information that's the power of security so nothing is secured as such so us is preparing itself is or i would say it's 100 under prepared for the kind of cyber attack would china would launch on them i am not sure yes we have a cert Uh, we have uh, specialized agencies for this and uh, you know a couple of months before all of us would have received that uh, sms or uh, a push message in our mobile phone that this is a computer emergency response team cert and uh, we are raising an alarm so all these things are going on but uh, cyber defense alone or security alone will not work every country need to have a very very strong a uh, cyber offensive army cyber offensive operation be it with its own in-house or outsource so this is where we also need to focus on we have seen such an example when the mumbai power grid was brought down we have seen another example when the aims hospitals opd system was brought down aims couldn't function for next two days so these are the samples of our enemy's uh, aggression in terms of cyber warfare we also need to prepare and we also need to demonstrate cyber attack has to move more from ddos kind of attack which is very very low level if it has to uh, if the enemy has to feel the intensity it has to literally cripple the enemy's infrastructure and china is not secured as such china do does has its own vulnerabilities in terms of its hardware and software everything can be done in fact china once accused india of interfering the, with one of their medical university records the indian act has cracked into it but this needs to be uh, part of our security policy security program otherwise we are also equally vulnerable to this kind of chinese uh, massive cyber uh, attacks hope you like this video do like share and uh, subscribe to our channel also press the bell icon thank you all jai hind